Hello again from Elm City, North Carolina. It's a sunny day here in North Carolina. Last time I spoke to you, it was really, really chilly. And you can see I'm in short sleeve shirts today. It's a little windy here, but uh, we, we can handle that as long as we have pretty well. It's about 83 degrees here today. Well, we've got uh, done a lot of a lot of work on this uh, uh, plow, and I wanted to go over with you and give you an update. This will be part three in the series. And I reckon a good place to start with is right up here at the front on the, uh, this rail here. I believe I'm going to have to put something up here at the front and bring this rail back in here to give it some support on that outer uh, hitch area up there. That has to be worked out. This is pretty much where this gauge wheel is going to go. You may have seen that last time. But anyway, it, it hasn't been uh, fastened to the plow yet. And I'm debating whether to leave it right there or move it back here about a foot. It would be easier to mount back here. I, I really don't know. It just has to be something, a trial and error type thing. If anybody's got any ideas, I'm, I'm ready to listen. Uh, and right here uh, is the, the rail for the back bottom. I'm going to have to fabricate that. This is a rail out of a 560, another 560 plow I took out of. And I'm going to have to bend it. Here. I'm gonna have to bend it to copy this to copy this angle right here. So what I did to copy that, so I have to take it to a machine shop without taking this out. I made me a template of that angle right here, and I found out where it's got to be bent at. I measured it down. I got a mark right here where it's got to be bent. When it's bent exactly on that mark, that front part will lap over and hit this right in here perfectly. Then when that laps up there, I'll, uh, I'll mark, I've got to cut this off a little bit of note, I don't know exactly where yet, and drill a couple of holes into this. And then uh, I'll probably have to take this out anyway, or else get a frame drill and drill the holes through this rail right here. And that'll take care of this back rail on this. You remember last time I had beams over here and everything all kind of, I knew what I, I had a method to my madness. Well anyway, this is the way I envisioned it turning out. I just come down on this one and took the top part out, and on this one, come down and took the bottom part out, lapped them over, welded them, got them in perfect alignment, and then put the bolts back through it. That ought to be a joint there forever. One problem I ran into, I found out on the sixth bottom, the, the actual uh, beam, it has uh, more steel in it. It's thicker. The webbing is thicker. And so the quarter inch difference between a beam, this come out of a 540 uh, semi-mount plow. And I was going to try to make another one like this. It's got problems cutting square holes. And anyway, I got to thinking the strength is going to be up in here. When I get back here, I don't need as much strength. And it would cut down on some of the weight. So I just butted it into it and welded it and made a joint there. When I paint it and get all through it, it will it don't look bad now, but it really, really looks good. And, of course, they've added all the bottoms to it, as you see. Some of it still got to come off and be have some work done to it. You take, uh, like, this one here. A couple of them have got a bent shank down here. And I've got to take care of that. Uh, I put some mold boards on it. And I got a few more to go. Well, I can test it out like I want to. But anyway, this beam right here turned out really well. Uh, and up here on the front, what I had to do was show a box beam a little bit, just like on that number 70 plow. Like I said, I'm doing a lot of stuff on this plow, like that plow is built. So I cut that off. This mount, this is made to mount right there, like it is, mounted perfectly. Then I took these two bearings and I added this piece right in here with the clamp and all and then I uh, drilled a hole and got it working really good. Now I was going to put another one of these bearings over here and I had a neighbor come by the night. He works in industrial maintenance at a Firestone Tire and Rubber Company here in North Carolina, my area in North Carolina. And he said, why don't you just use one? And I really don't know why not. Except uh, I cut a little bit of this off today, and I'm going to leave it like that, and I just put both of them together for the heck of it. And I think I'm going to eventually go back and cut that off right there, because I really don't think that's, uh, all I do would be spreading it out. I don't think it's needed, but I'm going to try it like that first before I cut it off. And this, of course, had a culture works up front on this one. And then I had to add this uh, inch and a half by three flat bar across the front to strengthen this hitch up. This was done, uh, these are inch bolts, cut the heads off, made these pieces here at the machine shop, put them on there and pull them up. As you can uh, see, you can see all the joints, how nice they See how nice all this stuff really pulled up in here. And I made some clamps. And right, and right now, 
I've got a friend of mine, we're going to start on it next week. He uh, works at a machine shop and he does this uh, computer design. We're going to design a hitch like this uh, to fit this quick hitch up here. This is not quite wide enough in here. This is three quarter. We're going to go to seven eighths and we're going to go to one inch in the bolt. And we're going to fix this. As you can see, this is too much of that. We're going to kind of leave that in there so I can put spacers in there and just tighten it down. That way I can adjust my hitch up and down if, if I need it. I think it's pretty close to what it needs to be now. And anyway, that's, that's about the update I've got for you right now. Except it's really coming along good. The and, uh, only thing i got left now, i got to fix this. i got to bend the rail on the back. The uh, bracket back there for the uh, tail, for the uh, gauge wheel, that's, just put the gauge wheel in there and take about five minutes. And I reckon the biggest thing I've got to do now, of course, I've got to attach this wheel here. And uh, something else I've really got to do. I'm going to use this turnbuckle here to adjust this wheel here. I've got to uh, get a bell crank here, and I've got to work out so every time I turn this thing around, it'll adjust the wheel. I don't know how much yet, maybe an eighth of an inch at a time is what I want to do. No more than a quarter. Uh, got to work that out and say work this out, get that straightened up, that done. I'll get a lot more done next week, hopefully. And the big thing is getting this hitched design because once we uh, get this design on a computer and print it out, it goes to a shop in a town north of me that has a laser uh, cutter and these pieces will be cut out of laser then we have to weld it. This is, in my opinion, the, the toughest thing to uh, I've got to, to, get, to get the hitch here. Now the top link, the top link, uh, if you noticed on the, the in the uh, 4300 with the 10 bottom plow, they came here with some round stock and made an arch, and this arch hooked into the top link on the tractor, and then they had a chain that run back to the, about the center of the plow. I don't know why they built that arch other than the convenience of hooking up. I think what I'm going to do, just to try it to begin with, I'll experiment and find out. I'm going to hook my bottom links here, and my top link, I'm going to hook it right into the top link on this uh, quick hitch up here. That's about where it's going to go. Uh, okay, this, this is how the quick hitch is going to work on it. This is pretty close to where it's going to do, be right in here. And like I was talking about the, uh, the top link, I think I'm going to come right in here and add a uh, plate, both are probably to this or in between somewhere. This is pretty much the center line of draft on this plow right along it, right, right along in here, and run it to the top link up here, just a piece of log chain, and make me a uh, some type of thing, hook the chain in and come up here and just drop it over it. And I'll have to fix something in here. I don't think it'll come out, but some, something you never know uh, may come up and it jump out of there. Just fix it so it won't jump out. And I think that's the only reason they made this arch in here, IH, to hook in here and chain hook here is to make sure that chain didn't probably jump out of there. So uh, that is my idea on uh, finishing this thing up. I've got along quicker than I thought I would on it. Uh, I think uh, if I get along next week, it'll probably be two more weeks on this thing finishing it up. So we'll uh, we'll take a look at it in about two weeks, and maybe we'll be uh, turning some dirt with it. That's all from uh, Elm City, North Carolina. See you later from Red Bibb's Bill. Okay. And making this backbone for the plow is done about only three or four miles from my house. I have a friend of mine, he's an excellent machinist, he has a little uh, backyard shop. But everybody uh, really uh, likes his work and he has a son that works with him, he's only 24 years old. And he's an excellent machinist himself and welder. His name is John Baker and his daddy runs Baker Machine and Welding, a machine shop here in uh, Elm City. 
and they they did this connected this for me and it is absolutely perfect it is, it is straight in every way and I'm looking forward to turning some dirt with it so again that's all from Red Bidwell.